Imagine if a symbiote tries to bond with a xenomorph, creating what we will call a venomorph. Venom, xenomorph, venomorph, get it? Okay, first we have to dive into their origins to understand how it can happen or if it can happen. And if so, how would it make sense? So firstly, symbiotes are spawned from the living abyss, which are essentially manifestations of their creator Null's dark will, of the void, which is essentially something of oblivion from the Marvel Universe, carrying pieces of this corruptive power known as the Necro Power. This living abyss is a cosmic sentient darkness, an anti-life substance with the potential to destroy gods and convert lesser beings into hosts for itself. On the other hand, Xenomorphs originate from a far different type of dark power, the Black Goo Pathogen, a bioweapon of sorts designed to either evolve or annihilate whatever it infects. This Black Goo gives Xenomorphs their infamous aggressiveness, rapid growth and adaptive nature. So while both the symbiotes and the Xenomorphs share this basis of parasitism, their co-natures differ. Symbiotes are like eldritch parasites with a hive mind and a collective memory, while Xenomorphs, even though they have a hive mind, they are more of an engineered apex predator species with a highly evolved non-Newtonian pathogen as a basic building block of their life. So here both the symbiotes and the black goo pathogen have the power to alter DNA. The living abyss enables a symbiote to bond with any host down to the cellular level, connecting to every vital system and even syncing with the host's DNA to adapt to the symbiote's abilities perfectly. The black goo or chemical A03959X.91-15 is a living highly mutagenic substance, a black amorphous compound comprised of millions of microorganisms which behave as a single parasitic entity. This thing mutates the DNA of hosts to create brutal predatory forms. So the black goo takes over, breaks down and rebuilds the DNA to its own image, bringing forth new life forms. But the symbiote's anti-life doesn't just take over DNA, they adapt it, change it, also can bring it back to a normal and catalogs it in what is known as a codex, adding the host's memories, skills and even emotions to the symbiote's collective hive mind. Here at the basic level, we can safely assume that the living abyss would eventually fight and take over even the black goo pathogen, since the symbiote makeup is highly superior given its origins from the void. Now, can a symbiote born with a xenomorph or would a symbiote find a xenomorph to be a suitable host? The answer is absolutely fucking yes, and why not? The symbiotes in the Marvel Universe have been seen to bond with anything, from lowly fish to frogs to even a living planet and gods. Here in this scenario, the symbiote can just merge with the flesh of an adult drone or with the face hugger as was seen in Aliens vs Avengers issue 1, released this year. The xenomorph's biology with its deadly chitinous exoskeleton and unique body structure would actually make it a compelling partner. However, the cognitive capability or compatibility and bonding would be another issue. The symbiote would attach to and infiltrate the xenomorph's cells using its own form of biological invasion, taking over the body of the host and permeating through the pores and spaces between atoms to bind to every cell of the alien. This merger would transform the xenomorph's body into an even more durable fortress, as the symbiote could form a living abyss armor that expands in size and strength just as it does with human hosts. The xenomorph symbiote would have the general body layout of the host but with the powers of the symbiote that usually brings out in other hosts, with the black ichor tentacles, bulletproof, size and more. So bonding is no issue but as we have seen in the Marvel lore, the symbiotes are still mortal beings and require certain, let's say nutrition in order to survive. A big part of the symbiote survival is feeding on phenethylamine found in human brains and also adrenaline which the xenomorph doesn't naturally produce, or it doesn't as far as we know. The question now is whether or not a xenomorph can produce these essential amino acids and hormones that are needed by the parasitic symbiote in order to keep them or the bonding partially stable. There is no description of this in any alien book or movie, so let's say that it cannot produce this. Therefore, a symbiote might adapt its feeding requirements, tapping into the xenomorph's unique biochemistry to convert whatever chemicals it needs. And for the two, which is adrenaline and phenethylamine, it would just get it off its prey, which are most likely human heads, as usual. Some might say that given the scene from the ending of Venom The Last Dance movie, the xenomorph's acidic blood would probably be a major barrier for the symbiote. However, this isn't really the case. 
there has been no confirmation from the lore and comics that says that symbiotes are vulnerable to acid. That was just a movie plot hole. In fact, the lore says otherwise. Certain symbiotes like Venom, for instance, have their own acidic saliva, which has been confirmed to be waste secretions of the symbiote. So it is here that we see that the symbiotes can withstand or even produce similar corrosive substances, like the xenomorphs, and that their only weaknesses are certain sonic vibrations, also fire and a new chemical called K34 developed by Alchemax and Sliver. Thus acid is no real issue for the symbiotes and they can even produce this so it's compatible. Now imagine what this hybrid would look like, very much still like the familiar xenomorph form which is sleek and terrifying but now armored with dark living abyss coating that makes it even stronger, faster and more resilient and impervious to bullets. The glossy black of the symbiote after merging with the xenomorph's already smooth biomechanical surface would appear like an almost liquid armor or highly reflective. It could form the well-known long elastic appendages and produce living abyss shells that harden and retract as needed, allowing it to shift between stealth and sheer force. A symbiote bonded xenomorph would be nearly unstoppable. With enhanced strength, intelligence from the symbiote, this hybrid would lose the limitations of a standard xenomorph animalistic instincts and potentially allowing it to plan, strategize and even wield tools if necessary. And since symbiotes communicate telepathically and form a hive mind, this xenomorph might also be capable of organizing coordinated attacks with the other infected hosts, creating a whole new level threat. We also know that collectively the xenomorphs are an alien species that follow the will of a singular queen and are bound together by a hive mind. On a larger scale, they follow an empress that looks over multiple hives who in turn is subjected to a powerful psychic connection to their ultimate ruler, the queen mother. Now symbiotes have a hive mind which is a metal and metaphysical realm that physically connects symbiotes and their kind to one another and their god, Null, while also serving as an afterlife for the dead symbiotes and their hosts. This only makes the species of the xenomorphs which are already evolved to serve a hive to be even more compatible to the hive mind of the symbiotes should they become hosts. The god of the symbiotes might even see these creatures as allies in his war against life and light. So in a way they might be the most well suited hosts for his symbiotes. Now lastly let's talk about reproduction which would be a terrifying new form. So symbiotes can asexually reproduce by creating offsprings from their own substance in a process called budding and the offsprings emerge as way more powerful than their parents. Also xenomorphs spawn asexually, however their life cycle has many stages which begins with the face huggers inside the egg like overmorphs. If the symbiotes could adapt to the already reconstituted DNA of the aliens, then they might even find a new way to procreate by placing budded symbiote offsprings inside these overmorphs. The result would be an ultimate life form, a symbiote offspring lying in wait adapted to feed on the secretions of the overmorph while they wait for a host to come which might be years on end and it would emerge like a face hugger eventually bursting out and bonding with a host that comes too close. Imagine xenomorph symbiotes with hive intelligence infiltrating planets, waiting for centuries or millennia inside overmorphs and spreading with terrifying speed. Now this is a horror movie waiting to be made. And now as a bonus, let's take a look at the Aliens Avenger issue 1. Here a symbiote emerges from an overmorph and hides. So when the Avengers arrive, it jumps and latches on to Miles Morales or this universe's iteration of Spider-Man. But Miles was safe since his suit had a symbiote attached to it. And so not only did the symbiote born with a face hugger, but it also seemed to absorb it into its constituent matter, probably absorbing the abilities of the symbiote itself and thus giving or might have given Miles some xenomorph capabilities in the upcoming issue too. And so that is what happens if a symbiote and a xenomorph comes into contact. Now like, subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next video. Take care fam.